I'm Hillary Pennington. I am the vice president here for the Foundation's Education, Creativity, and Free Expression program. And I'm thrilled to welcome you here from across the US and from across the world, across the globe, a group of amazing women coming together for what I think will be a historic time. So uh, we welcome you. We welcome uh, all of you who are here, men, a men allies, and women. Uh, and I also am so pleased to welcome our partner in this event, a grantee that we're so proud to work with, the International Women's Media Foundation, which does fantastic work supporting women on the news, in, in the news media around the world. So I want to just thank you, Elisa Munoz, and your terrific team for helping bring this, uh, this vision, uh, uh, the vision for this event to reality. And that vision, I am told by my colleague, Barbara Rabb, who, is the, who leads our, our media work here at the foundation, and we're, uh, who is right there, Barbara. Um, so she tells me that the vision for this event actually uh, took root over a bargain-priced Thai lunch in, of all places, Austin, Texas. Uh, <laughs> last April, during a summit hosted by another Ford grantee, the digital publication, the Texas Tribune, and Barbara was there, as were Elisa, and four of the women digital news entrepreneurs that we and uh, IWMF together support. And it was over that lunch that this group of, of women said to each other, wouldn't it be great to bring women working in the digital news space together from around the world? And that was April, and here we, here we are. Uh, and this is one of the things that I most cherish about working here at the Ford Foundation. Um, this is a place that uh, helps to create and support ideas and people, and we've done it throughout our history. We have supported institutions, we've helped to build them, we've empowered individuals like Gloria Steinem, um, helping to get her started as she uh, was starting the Ms. the Ms. Magazine and the Ms. Foundation, and, to, and we've helped to support and generate uh, important ideas that have helped to change the world. And so I hope that our time here together will do that thing, will help us spur each other to have incredible ideas that can help revolutionize digital media, not just for women, but for everyone uh, in our very complex and challenging world. So who knows where these great ideas will take us. 25 years ago, the IWMF's founders recognized a disparity in their newsrooms. They saw few women leaders in the media and set about to try to change it. I'm sure that with the possible exception of tonight, many of you have felt the same way as you see your peers in the digital news industry. Today, IWMF continues to support women journalists seeking to make inroads in the news media, but the challenges in the landscape are nearly unrecognizable. Digital news upended many news organizations and made it possible for individuals to challenge the foothold of legacy media with innovative business models and coverage. However, as so aptly said by Emily Bell, remark remaking journalism in its own image, only with better hair and tighter clothes, is not a revolution or an evolution. It is a repackaging of the status quo with a very nice clubhouse attached. A revolution calls for a regime change of more significant depth. Bell was referring to the lack of women in leadership roles in some of the most recognizable digital news brands in the United States. Four years ago, the IWF joined forces with the Ford Foundation to support women journalists seeking to transition into digital news industries by founding their own organizations. We provided much needed seed funding for women journalists starting digital news sites and supported such diverse projects as Symbolia and Syria Deeply, who you'll hear more about later. The experiences of our grantees and their peers has shown us that the most critical need for women entering digital news is the opportunity to network, technical training, and most importantly, capital that will allow their fledgling organizations to grow. Yet, according to a 2014 study on venture capital funding for women entrepreneurs published by Babson College, 85% of all venture capital funding businesses have no women on the executive team. Only 2.7% of venture capital funding companies had a woman CEO. This despite the fact that businesses with women on the executive team are more likely to have higher valuation at both first and last funding. 
And interestingly, venture capital firms with women partners are more than twice as likely to invest in companies with a women on the executive team, and more than three times as likely to invest in companies with women CEOs. That would be encouraging, except for the fact that there is a declining number of women making decisions in venture capital communities. The total number of women partners in venture capital firms has declined since 1999 from 10 to 6%. Working against these odds and other barriers, we realize that the current imbalance in the digital news industry cannot be addressed one woman at a time. It is critical to identify the factors contributing to this disparity, in addition to supporting the innovation of women who are bringing the innovation that women are bringing to this field. So we hope that our summit will be the beginning of a real revolution in digital news. Thank you. And I'm Nadine Hoffman. I'm the Deputy Director of the International Women's Media Foundation. It's so great to see all of you here, um, so many of you that I recognize and so many of you that I've been communicating with over the last few months about this exciting event. Um, so I'm glad we all made it to New York and there was no blizzard. So now I'd like to um, turn to the fun part of tonight's program. Um, and tonight we are excited to showcase six women whose digital news startups and projects are on the cutting edge of innovation. I think you'll agree, agree that they are an incredibly impressive bunch. Their ventures are diverse in scope and they span the globe from Afghanistan to the Middle East to the United States. Tonight our speakers are going to give Ignite Talks about their work. And for those who aren't familiar, um, Ignite Talks are short-timed presentations. We're allowing seven minutes for tonight's speakers. Um, and we won't take questions after every speaker, but I would um, encourage you after the program tonight to please engage with them in conversation uh, because we're fortunate to have all of these wonderful women with us. So just as a few reminders before we get started, um, our hashtag for the summit is code 15. Please, please um, join us in tweeting and um, spreading the word via social media about what is interesting that's happening in this room. Um, and then I'll just say a quick reminder about tomorrow's program before we get started, which is that we'll be meeting right back here at 8 a.m. tomorrow um, for breakfast and a full day of engaging panels, presentations, and conversations. Um, so with that, let's get started. So I'm happy to introduce tonight first um, for our Ignite Talks, Jennifer Brandell, who is founder and executive producer of Curious Nation. Curious Nation is a multimedia news experiment that explores what happens when journalists invite the public to set their agenda and collaborate in the reporting process. Brandell's experiment to democratize the editorial process first launched in Chicago as Curious City, and she's now exporting the model around the US to cities like Seattle, Detroit, and Boston. Please join me in welcoming Jennifer. Um, I'm Barbara Rabb, and I'm the program officer, as you heard, for the Ford Foundation's journalism program and proud partner with IWMF for this summit. And I just have to take a step back and say, you know that thing that happens when you work on something for like a really long time and then all of a sudden it is that thing and you're not really sure that it's really that thing because all you've been doing is thinking about that thing that's this moment for me um, I'm really pleased that you're all here I know that travel was not easy for many of you so we really appreciate your being here and we will be joined by additional colleagues tomorrow who had to do some rejiggering of their travel as well um, and in connection with that, um, we are going to do a slight switcheroo for tonight's program. Um, Kara Swisher, our keynoter, was unable because of the weather to travel to New York for tonight. So instead, what we're going to do, and this is what's slightly different um, from what's in your program, we're going to start off uh, tonight's program by hearing uh, for just a few minutes from Kara through the magic of digital video. Um, and uh, recently, New York Magazine called Kara, uh, quote, Silicon Valley's most feared and well-liked journalist, and then asked, how does that happen? Uh, Kara, of course, for those I'm sure many of you know, uh, is a legendary tech journalist and the co-creator of All Things D and now Recode. Now, Kara's full video that she recorded for us literally just a few hours ago uh, runs about 15 or 16 minutes, and we're not going to show it all tonight, but it will be available very shortly on IWMF's website. But tonight, I thought we would just play a short uh, piece of it where um, 
to focus on what she talks about as uh, what she has to say about solutions um, for women, including journalists, but not just journalists, who want to succeed in the digital and the tech world.